Taking cars of years past and throwing current day technology into them isn't new, but doing so can strike a nerve with purists. So what do you do when you want to put a modern twist on a classic BMW from the 80s, a BMW E30 M3? Well, you go off and solicit the help of a bunch of college kids who've never restored a car in their life, of course. And you tell them to throw BMW's newest S55 M3 motor in it, of course. And you tell them that they only have 11 months to build the car. And when they're done, they gotta drive it to Vegas for SEMA and be in the battle of the build, of course. Well, sit back and relax, you purest dongs, because we're going bumper to bumper on the first ever S55 swapped E30 M3. Beep, beep, beep. The E30 M3 has been a hot commodity over the past few years. And while there's always been a hardcore E30 loving community out there, more collectors have recently taken a liking to the 80s sports car. Part of the reason for the E30 M3 craze is, well, BMW never really made a ton of them. And finding low mileage, unmodified versions of the boxy Beamer is rare. But also, car enthusiasts have come to realize that the E30 M3 is the foundation the M3 Empire was built on. It has historic significance. A race car, at its core, it's a homologation special built for Group A racing. BMW designed the race car first, then modified it to make it legal on the streets. In fact, it's posted more track wins than any M car to date. And that's saying something, because the M stands for motorsport, i.e. racing. So let's imagine that you got a 1988 E30 M3 at your disposal and you're thinking about doing an engine swap. You know the history behind the car, the cult following it has, and how opinionated them Bavarian car loving purists are. But that didn't stop my boy Corey Rowan from throwing BMW's latest and greatest engine into this 31 year old E30. Back in 2016, Corey was approached by CRC to do a car build as means for a charity promotion. At the time, Corey was already in the midst of collecting parts to do a build on his 88 M3. So he pitched an idea that he'd been toying with, swapping out the 109,000 mile S14 engine in his E30 M3 with an S55 motor from the current F80 generation of M3, M4 Beamers. There have been a lot of different motor swaps into the E30 chassis over the years. S50, S54, LS, but there's one that had not been done, the S55 swap. And to add a little bit of excitement to the mix, in true SEMA car fashion, he wanted to complete the car on an impossible deadline in less than a year to be built in his own one and a half car garage. No problemo. Corey wanted to find a way to engage some younger car enthusiasts who wouldn't normally have the opportunity to do a build of this scale. Finding some hardworking students who would see the project through its entirety would be tough. But luckily, Corey also participates in the World Racing League and knew some hardworking youngsters who had volunteered on his WRL pit crew. So he asked them and they got on board. Of course they did. Practical learning experience at its finest. Over the course of the 11 month build, over 20 mentors helped out on the project. From fabricators to suspension gurus, a lot of auto love went into helping these youngsters build this car. So the project was set and the Honest Assembly team was formed. So where do you begin? First things first, start breaking things down so you can build it back up, just like I do in the mirror every single morning. Ugh. The 88 M3 was disassembled down to the frame with every nut and bolt categorized and cataloged. With the car down to its bare bones, the team went to work on the body. 
The original panels weren't in terrible shape, but there were 108 dents that needed to be addressed. Just knowing that number gives you a clue into how these guys work. The car was media blasted down to bare metal and finished off with this silky smooth white paint. The underbody got the full treatment too with all new panels and fasteners. The livery is DTM inspired, a throwback to the 80s when certain teams didn't have money to do full liveries, so they just kept it simple with a two-tone red and white color scheme. I like it, I like it a lot. <laughs> Every single plastic and rubber piece on the car was replaced with a brand new equivalent, including the door, trunk, and hood seals. The M3 got a carbon fiber spoiler and a gurney flap, but keeping true to the original intention of the build, no obnoxious fender flares or overdone bumpers were put on the car. When a car comes perfect from the factory, there's no need to mess it up. Any and all new old stock parts that could be found were put on the car, including the Bosch headlights and Hella taillights. The taillights came all the way from Egypt. Now I'm only assuming that they came out of a tomb next to a mummy. Custom front and rear subframes were fabbed and SLR speed built custom arms specifically for this car. Custom 18.85 inch forge line center lock wheels were made for the build. Why center lock? Race cars need freaking center locks. So doy. You don't have time to be undoing all kinds of bolts when you're trying to win the race. The frame itself was also modified with hidden chassis reinforcements. Where are they? I don't know. They're hidden. Little secret reinforcements all around the car. Shh, don't tell anybody. How about we go take a peek inside of this Beamer? You care to join me? Please, after you. Now because this car was gonna be displayed at SEMA, any and every piece of the interior was either replaced or restored. Cardinal red, Napa leather, all the way from Germany land, made its way onto the seats. Black Napa leather was used to wrap the steering wheel, console, pillars, and dash. Take a closer look at the stereo, and you'll see a brand new old stock Nakamichi RD460, because nothing's cooler than listening to Piano by Candlelight and your S55 swapped E30. Everything in here is tasteful and simple, keeping true to the original M3 design. Even the upgrades make sense with the BMW Motorsport golf ball shift knob. I think it's a very nice touch. It feels cool, like a golf ball. Going to the country club, it's 1988. Hey, where'd you get that future engine? Don't worry about it, Biff. How about you work on your short game? Cause there's a charity golf scramble this weekend and I'm sick of carrying your ass. Now, if you have a keen eye, you might be thinking, hey, that cluster isn't a standard E30 M3 cluster. Good eye, Biff. It's not. They decided to take the entire working F80 cluster and adapt it to the E30 dash. They used the F80 cluster, F80 wiring assembly, and yes, the F80 M3 S55 B30 motor. And now my favorite part of every episode of Bumper to Bumper, I just wanna point out that this is the key, and just like on a new M4, you don't have to put it anywhere. It just gotta be in the car with you. <laughs> I would drive this. Ready to get into the meat and potatoes of this pupster? Please, after you. The F80 S55 motor you see before you was pulled from a wrecked 2015 M3. I can only assume that the driver was doing some hot boy stuff that he or she wasn't quite ready to do. Know your limits. The stock S55 is a three liter inline six that uses two mono scroll turbos. That's good for 425 horsepowers and 406 pound feet of torques. After some mods, which I'll talk about soon, those numbers got bumped up a bit to 550 hertz pers and 560 pound feet of torque. If you take a look at the available free space in the engine bay, you'll quickly notice that there isn't any. Getting this motor in here was no easy feat. To make sure the engine would fit, they needed a little help from their friends. And by friends, I mean a donor car. 
This was a planned move, done early on in the build so the body and chassis work could get done while they figured out engine mounts and stuff for the S55. Not only were they able to work two problems at once, if they happened to make any mistakes on the 325 donor, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. I mean, Max, the editor of this show, has an E30, and quite frankly, they're a dime a dozen. Unlike great editors. Max, I love you, buddy. Before the motor got dropped in, they first tackled the wiring. Ugh, it just makes me nervous because swapping a wiring harness from one car to another and making everything play nicely together is really, really hard and very boring. The F80 ECU needs to talk to a bunch of individual modules from door sensors to the clutch safety switch. So the team got a little help from BPM Sport where they were able to hack into the ECU, Jesse style, and remove codes and any unnecessary sensors. Keeping this twin turbo six banger from overheating are six different kinds of F80 coolers with some custom piping, four brushless fans, and an aftermarket controller. CSF supplied the charge cooler and heat exchanger, and they painted it white to match the car. It's nice. The fit and finish is gorgeous. The thing looks OEM, which is my favorite kind of build, and I really appreciate that instead of going with that blinged out look, they went with a more subtle wrinkled black finish. After 11 months of work, the team made their way from Denver to Las Vegas for SEMA, still working on the car each time they had to stop for fuel. And once they'd made it to SEMA, only minutes before the first round of judging for Battle of the Builds, the car was finished, but untested. <laughs> and for a car to make it through competition, it's gotta run. After a few late nights of literally sneaking into the convention hall to work on the car, the first time it fired up was literally on the red carpet in the convention hall. To which someone quickly called out over the convention center PA, No cars are allowed to be started in the hall. Oops. <laughs> the car ended up placing in the top 12 in Battle of the Builds, top three in the Young Guns class, a huge accomplishment for anyone, let alone a group of booger-nosed college kids. To be fair, I don't know if they have boogers. You can't please everyone, trust me, I've tried. But I think the Honest Assembly team did the old school M3 right. They didn't just pull off a sweet engine swap, they did a full nut and bolt restoration. Maybe the most gratifying success for the team was winning Best Modified at Beamer Fest, a sign that the build was accepted by the community of E30 enthusiasts. And if you remember at the top of this, outside of giving some college students the once in a lifetime opportunity to build a SEMA car, they built the car to bring awareness to the Morgan Adams Foundation, a local Denver organization that helps children affected with cancer. A cool car built to help a great cause. Thanks Corey of VizFire for bringing the E30 out today. To find a list of the 20 mentors and partners that helped with this build and learn how you can donate, visit honestassembly.com or on Instagram at honestassembly. <laughs> Guys, thanks for watching this episode of Bumper to Bumper. I'm Sexy James, bye. That's what it says. <laughs>